right, and we're back. Let's see then. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, we got a book to take back. And we gotta turn in that bounty. Alright, so let's go turn those in. No, well, you see, Nathan, <clears throat> the thing about cats is they are what are called obligate carnivores, which means they have to eat meat. They cannot eat other things. So, if I did that, there's a good chance it would kill him. Alright, let's check out that sweet new lure. Well, he wouldn't appreciate it because cats don't taste, uh, lack the ability to perceive sweetness. Uh, it's thought that that's part of why they became obligate carnivores is uh, somewhere back in their history they had a mutation which took away their ability to taste sweet things. So, just like how birds can't taste spicy things, and that's why, you know, plants have, are spicy is, is you know, yeah. Didn't it die? Jupiter? I don't know. So wasps are like the warrior species, okay. I do think it is from Futurama, yes. Oh, yeah, so that's one. Let's go turn in that bounty. So yeah, so that's why these people who try to like put their cats on vegetarian or vegan or whatever diets, honestly, if they care about their cats and you just give them up if they find giving them meat to be immoral. Oh snap! Alright, well that'll give us something to do in a minute. After we turn this in. Indeed. You may. What? Recourse to recovers two TP every two turns. That's nice. <sighs> oh, and fifty berries. That's nice. Can I equip that? I mean, I'm not surprised if that was true. Yeah, I just very vividly remember seeing, like, um, a Reddit thread or something somewhere. It's like, is there a way I can make my cat vegan? And they're like, if you really, really love your cat and you really, really want what's best for it, just give your cat up. <laughs> give it to someone who will take proper care of it. It's like, wow. Wow, bro. Okay, so next level I need to get some um, points for medals. I also remember seeing a video of like a lady who only ever... Whoever like... Um... She only was feeding her cats rice or something and they were like stupid sick.
Yeah, that's kind of that's an interesting that that's like an interesting philosophical argument. It's like if humans, since humans have the capacity to survive not eating meat, should we not eat it? Versus, you know, if if the whole point of this is that we're respecting nature, shouldn't we be a part of it and also, you know, essentially be predators? It's complicated, I guess. Not, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, that's that's something else. It's like you can't, you know, that's the, the part of the equation that you're missing is that you're a human being. You're, you possess the trait omnivory, so you can eat anything you want. Other animals are not like that. Let's get this new sweet lore book. History of Termites. Termites like wasps, lizards, and lambs for illicit first, and the outside of area. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. See, it's that's something that a lot of people struggle with is the concept of balance. It's like people want to unilaterally say something is good or something is bad, and it's not always possible. Interesting, wonderful run into termites next. Let's see, alright, so I turn those in. What was I gonna do after that? Still just kind of working on that, kind of working on that. Mm. I mean, I know where the Devourer is, I don't really want to deal with it right now. Bees request me in Metal Island, I have to find the butler again. This ore is in a place I haven't been to. Lost item is, where did he say it was? Sunset Inn. And helpers need it once at the hive. Okay, so let's try to see. I don't know where Sunset Inn is. Let's see if it's here, and then we'll see if it's over various other places. And then we can just go to the hive and help out real quick with that before we advance the plot. Uh, maybe later. Hmm. Hmm. I don't think it's just on the internet. I think that's just in life. It's that people people want to feel like they're in control. And you know, not understanding something is very scary and is in its essence like the purest essence of lack of control whereas if you can you know ni nicely neatly say okay this this concept goes in this box this is how this works i understand it it's not scary anymore they feel like they're in control you know and it goes for all kinds of different things like any like like practically any human concept you can apply that to So that wasn't the inn. Let's go and find the next inn. Maybe it's an inn we haven't been to yet, and then we'll just, you know, end up in the Bee Kingdom as our last stop.
it's also change if you think about it people are also you know not very pleased with change for the exact same reason it's like okay everything is different now now i have to <clears throat> understand this new way that things work and i'm not happy about it because you know the worldview that i had carefully constructed and understood and felt safe in is now threatened it's like what it, the 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 effect of my changed worldview has you know it doesn't matter is this the sunset end it doesn't matter if it's like, you know, hurting someone else that, you know, if I continue to hold the worldview that makes me feel safe because I'm a selfish human being. I guess. I don't know which one is the sunset in. Let's see. Uh, all right, we'll allow this. All right, I'm gonna allow it. Well, yeah, that's because the internet has this nice blend of perceived anonymity, where you can say whatever you want without the same sort of consequences that you would have if you were standing in front of somebody. It's like, think about it. How many people are gonna, you know, stand in front of like a gay person and talk about how they think that being gay is immoral or stand in front of a person of color and espouse their racist views they're probably not going to do it because they're not stupid whereas on the internet where it's all anonymous for the most part and or difficult to verify who people are and, and things like that you know they feel people feel much more free to express those things And so, so at the same time, people are coming into contact with ideas that, you know, in everyday life, they probably wouldn't ever come in contact with. All right, so this is not the right end. And for the exact same reason as that person feels that they are safe to express their controversial views in an anonymous setting, Others feel equally comfortable expressing their dislike for those things and whatnot in an anonymous setting. It's kind of like someone called the internet like the free market of ideas, essentially, where it's completely unregulated and people can do and say essentially whatever they want. So that's, that's kind of what you're running into there. It's, and it all seems extremely amplified. And I've said this before, that things like, say, Twitter, for example, most social media, because it's text-based, there's, there's no tone. There's no sarcasm. It's, it's, you can't immediately, like, if you want, you can't immediately tell if someone is joking or serious. And then you run into things like uh, Schrodinger's douchebag who will say, oh, I was just, it was just a joke, bro, if you call them out on it, things like that. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, if you, you can't, you can't, and, and the opposite is also true. Like if you see someone in public who's like, if you have a boss who like makes like low key racist comments and things like that, you can't really, unless you're prepared to really dig into it, you can't really call them out on their bullshit either because you're in public and there's consequences. If you decide that you want to tackle the problem head on in that moment. So yeah, absolutely. But I think ultimately it's a good thing because I feel like eventually what will happen is the internet's fairly new. So I think eventually all these different things will kind of hit like a homeostasis where everyone will be like, like the people who never considered that thing, things that the things that they say have this impact on people and vice versa, you know, will eventually even out. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you, dude. I don't understand most of your humor. 
I doesn't mean I don't respect you as a person or anything like that, but I'm like, I don't get most of it. I'm not going to give you grief about it, though, because that's, that's just you and your deal. Alright, so where was this lady who needed help? And I never found most of your, I never found them like offensive, like you don't make like, like race jokes or whatever, stuff like that. Some of them are kind of like edgy and kind of gross, I guess you could say like some of the hypotheticals. But I'm just kind of like, eh, it's whatever, it's not a big deal. That's just, that's just how you do. Let's see, where was this lady? Yeah, exactly, and that's what I'm, that's, that's exactly what I'm saying is, like, on Twitter or something, there's no tone. You know, you read a block of text and you can't be like, oh, well, this is sarcastic, or oh, I'm just joking. You know, it's just, it's flat text, and it's up to the reader to interpret that tone. And people try to tell me all the time, like, yeah, you can tell tone from text. I'm like, no, that you are projecting your tone onto the text. You're projecting what you think the tone is. That's why I try to use like emojis and stuff, you know, to try to, or like italics or things if I'm trying to convey that this is like has some sort of alternative tone to it, but you know, that's still not a, a reliable codified system of language that we have. Menders are out of control. Okay. So, I don't know what the menders are. I guess we're just going to walk around. But see, that's the thing, Nathan. That's That, that kind of goes like, remember when we were talking about the whole backfire effect? <clears throat> and how people think idea, like, can't tell the difference between an idea and an actual, like, person standing in front of them holding a gun. They see the danger as the same thing. Yeah, and it's not easy, and most people aren't willing to go through that work, and it's hard to do on, like, Twitter. Because you need one tweet setting up the fact that it's a joke, etc., 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 and at that point, you kind of, it loses the punch. Like, it loses the effect. Like, And this is something else that I've kind of lightly discussed with other people. It's like, I understand the purpose of trigger warnings and things like that, but for people who are not triggered by something you're you're essentially you're it, it kind of makes it impossible to communicate certain things like uh like there was something where uh hey diston where the whole point of like whole point of a certain part of a joke is that it was meant to be shocking and by having to put a warning superseding it, it completely eliminated the point of it. You know, so it's so I feel like our language is still kind of like evolving and trying to figure out how to do a lot of that stuff. So what is a mender exactly? And and I feel like that's fair. You know. And, and it kind of comes down to, it's another question is, is who, in the end of the day, is responsible for that? Is the person who's saying it responsible? Is the person who, for, you know, making sure that they kind of like lowest common denominator it? Or is it the responsibility of the person who is, who is sensitive to the issue to be you know, kind of vigilant and aware. I mean, I don't know. It's a very, these are all very complex social questions. So I think I'm just going to try to find the room that that lady was in and see what she's on about.
I mean, because honestly, I don't want to upset people. That's not my goal. I don't think it's anyone's goal to upset people. I mean, I'm sure there are people who that is because it's part of what they want to do because they want to be shocking or edgy or, or what have you. But I mean, personally, that's not my goal. So, you know, if I end up upsetting somebody, I want to know because I don't mean to do it. Where was she? Maybe I need to take that tram. Sorry, and see, and that's that's the thing. It's it's kind of like where does it uh, where does it where's the buck stop? Because the other way around, you know, I didn't think we were going to turn in kind of turn into like a sociology class today. But you know, that's that's is I feel like that's a very good and very pertinent question. Is ultimately. If, if people keep saying you're responsible, no, you're responsible, no, you're responsible, what's going to end up happening is the government is going to say, okay, well, we're responsible, and now censorship. You know what I mean? Alright, so let's take the tram. I guess she's not in here anymore. I don't want to look this one up. So I would be very annoyed if I ended up looking this up. I know, right? So I'm trying to find one of these supposed menders that it's talking about. I don't know. Oh, well, I mean, I didn't mean like in terms of I, like, yeah, like if you want to talk like in the very specific niche of streaming, yes, but I was talking more broadly, like in terms of just the internet. Let's keep looking. Maybe we can find this 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 person. We already went through all three of these. Let's go downstairs. <clears throat> mm. Let's see. Let me move my cursor off of your text there. Yeah, it's very much a by degrees kind of thing. And then another thing that makes it difficult is that information moves so quickly. It used to be like way back that you could do things like, oh, hello, you both have exclamation points. People had time to do things like fact checking and whatnot. And these days it all just moves so fast that people are just like, I'm going to say this thing. And then everyone believes it because they don't have the time and energy to go and fact check it. Yeah, I mean, essentially, yeah. And I know that's something that we've, you and I, debated very fiercely at one point, but I don't regret getting off of YouTube because I basically saw that coming, that they're just going to say, you know what, it's too complicated, and we just are going to do whatever we need to do to protect our business, and if you don't like it, then you can kick rocks. Well, yeah, I mean, that also kind of ties into the whole worldviews, etc., like we were talking about. Like, if you hear a piece of news that jives with your worldview, you're probably not going to bother to go fact check it. If you see something that doesn't jive with your worldview, you're probably going to dismiss it out of hand instead of going to fact check it. I mean, that's, that's human nature. Humans assume that if this is appearing on CNN.com or whatever, that 
the people telling it to them have gone and, and fact-checked it before telling us about it because that's the job of the news, you know? I mean, and, and honestly, getting off, and it's, and it's fine, getting off of YouTube was good for various reasons, because I devoted more time to other platforms, and I've actually had that pay off for me pretty well, so I don't, I don't regret doing it, because YouTube had me locked into a certain way of thinking that I wasn't able to move past until I stopped using it. Not necessarily YouTube's fault intrinsically, but, you know, for me personally, I wasn't able to move past it until I ditched it, essentially. I think she's probably going to say we don't fix them, just smash them. <laughs> Kabu. Oh, Kabu, you're precious. What if they do, man? <laughs> Three around the processing areas. Okay. All right. Yeah, because I don't. I don't use it anymore. I don't use BitChute's auto, well, I mean, since I don't use YouTube, clearly, obviously, but I don't use that uh, auto upload thingy my deal. It feels like it's been, I've been hearing people, various people complaining about that for a long time. So, yeah, so that's pretty much what I do is I direct upload to BitChute, and then I post the bit shoot video on CGN, which is something else I would not have devoted any time and energy really to if I hadn't gotten rid of YouTube. And then also on Fruit Lab, which I've actually gotten a few Steam gift cards out of from devoting time and energy to that, which, you know, granted that's not one-to-one -one monetary value on the level of, say, you know, money money but you can if you instead of cashing out for the gift cards that you can uh, you can actually get a PayPal cash out if you save up but it's a uh, it's a bit nuanced but anyways yeah so that's fruit lab is something I never would have explored so yeah so all in all I feel like getting away from it has been beneficial to me. Oh yeah, I mean, they're, um, I'm actually on their moderation team for their chat. So I've talked to the devs and they are constantly, like Fruit Lab is a baby, an itty bitty baby, and they are constantly making improvements to it. Nope. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, they're upfront about their the way they do their ad basedness at least. Come on, stop being electric so I can jump on you. Ah. Yeah, they've um their Discord is very active. They've added a lot in terms of uh like the site has a built-in chat now, stuff like that. <sighs> Fine. Guess I have to fight you. Oh, I don't, because you're a weak enemy.
I guess this one I just have to run. Oh, I love that weak enemies just disintegrate badge. I think that's a solid plan, man. I think that's a solid plan. Are you a broken mender? No. So I think with, with YouTube and putting content on YouTube and kind of, you know, forgive me for saying this, it kind of falls into the whole concept of, you know, if you, if you work hard and play by the rules that you'll succeed, which is, there we go, that looks like a busted one. Which, you know, flies in the face of the very concept of capitalism. Like, that's the most democratic thing I've ever heard in my life, and capitalism is all about, you know, who has the advantage, who can, you know, one-up their competition, things like that. So... So I think a lot of people are under that same misapprehension that if they just go and post videos on YouTube all the time, you know, even... It reminds me of that, that episode of Star Trek Next Generation where they are, um... Where they're doing the, the war game exercise and Data does, like, the, uh, what is it? Stratagema versus, uh, Kolrami the Observer and ends up like losing all of his confidence because he doesn't win and Picard has to go to him and says you know look you, you can you can do everything right and you can still lose that's just that's just how life is so I feel like things like being a big streamer being a, a YouTube being YouTube famous stuff like that falls under that like it's it's something that people think if they just grind at it that will just happen but I I don't think that it's that simple <clears throat> will this work nope dang I didn't want that to happen Sort of like another thing, like how people these days are like, oh, I'm going to college and I'm getting in all this debt, etc., etc. It's like, well, you don't have to do that. Right, exactly. Exactly. It's very difficult to of 100% of your from the ground up from your own merit to like end up being to, to, to do that exactly So I don't think the guy is over here just because it's it's giving us such a hard time going this way. Right, which was, you know, honestly was the concept behind when we did, when we had one of heroes. That was sort of what we were trying to do. We were essentially trying to all collab with each other. The theory being that if we did that, it would create a situation where each of our micro audiences being drawn together would end up creating a macro audience. If that makes sense.
And it was a good idea, I think, and it worked for a while, but, you know, it's just differences of opinion, etc. So, I mean, the Discord is still there, and the possibility of, of bringing it back is still there, but I don't, I don't know. I'm way, I'm not as, inv I'm, I'm literally nowhere near as invested in it as I once was, so I don't know. Ah, I didn't jump. It sort of came down to a question of, you know, what's our, what, what do we want to achieve? What's our identity? And then that's kind of when it fell apart. But Retro Rainbow is still going strong, and uh, we're doing a charity thing on there very soon. So that's good that that one's still around. That's still, I mean, not the exact same concept, but a lot of people, after 1UP kind of collapsed in on itself, went over to Retro Rainbow, so... Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's kind of like the people who started it, it's like we knew each other. So it's like, yeah, okay, so I mean, of course, the people that we already know are fine. Um, the applications were, and again, it was just very, mis like, very, very not great how it kind of was handled. The, the applications was more intended for events and stuff like that. Alright, so that's two. And uh, with Retro Rainbow, we do still have like the applications to stream for events, but that's kind of by necessity because with what we're doing, trolls are an absolute factor. So it is very much necessary to vet people a little bit more thoroughly. Well, I mean, there was a bit more to it also. It's like, you know, we want to know what people want to stream when they want to stream it. It's stuff like, like, like for the events, it's more complicated. Like, let's say you and, uh, and, and Sifu want to stream the same game at the same time. Well, we need to know, we need to know what you want to stream and when you want to stream it, so that way we can kind of be like, okay, guys, you, buy, you both want to do the same game at the same time, so we got to, like, figure this out, because a lot of it just, you know, it's like a planning thing. Well, I'm sorry I came across that way. That was not at all what we were, like, intending. Yeah, and, and I feel like almost one of heroes was kind of like a like a uh, a dry run for Retro Rainbow almost because oh we we're a lot more sophisticated and aware of the process and it works a lot better now. So I feel like we went through a lot of uh, necessary growing pains with that. Yeah, and actually, it's it's kind of was a direct thing that um, with One Up we were trying to decide, you know, are we a charity group? Are we this? Are we that? And we're like, well, there's there's this charity that we want to support. It's controversial in the community, 
Um, some people are like, we don't want to be controversial. Some people are like, well, this is still important, so we're going to do it. And that kind of is what put the nail in the coffin. It's a... Uh, and it kind of makes me wonder and kind of be a bit unfortunately and heartbreakingly a bit uh, more skeptical of the idea of having a streaming community that can literally cater to everyone. <laughs> In your dreams. <laughs> Power exchange metal. Hmm. Well, with retro rainbow, we've seen that's and that's kind of what it was. Like the energy was there. Like one up had that energy, and like yeah, I feel it. Like some people were like. We don't want it to be a gimmick, but other people are like, it worked really well. And <clears throat> I was like, okay, well, what charity should we support? Which ones are the community going to be okay with? Not, etc., etc. And so Retro Rainbow going, like, like we're literally, we're going whole hog. We're going to try to eventually, if we can, become an NPO ourselves. Like, become the charity. Like, we're so into the charity, we're going to become it. We're going to become our waifu. All right, so all those things are done. All right, so let's uh, let's see who is if there's anyone available for raiding. Cuz it is about that time. Let's see, wake up little mousy. Right, and it kind of boiled down to an irreconcilable difference regarding like the specific charity. Like, okay, let's like, I'm, I'm gonna stop beating around the bush here a little bit. I mean, Retro Rainbow, it's pretty clear that it's a it's an LGBTQIA plus charity oriented thing, and in one up where like a lot of our community members feel strongly about this, why aren't we doing it? You know, it's like we should do this, and some people were like, you know, we can't do that; it's too divisive. And then it just kind of turned into into that. Uh, all right, well, let's see if there's anyone actually playing Bug Fables since I don't. See any of my peeps on right now? Uh, there's <laughs> just me. Wow, that's um. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, thanks everyone who came by, and uh, catch y'all later. Peace out.